guys. <clears throat> okay, just as a summary of what we have done so far. Wow, this thing is still recording. Um, if you guys remember, we have covered HTML Cascade style sheets the first two weeks, pretty much. Then the following four weeks, we cover JavaScript. Okay, so we pretty much covered chapters six through fifteen of the book. That included introduction to JavaScript, the script control statement, the script functions, script array, script objects, the document object model. So you guys should be experts on that. The events that capture are captured by by uh, JavaScript, XML, you know what an XML looks like and how to identify, how to define it. You n even know how to do AJAX calls using JavaScript. Okay? Now, I don't know if, you, if I have said this or not, but the 10th page is not going to be really a page. It's going to be a, an AJAX call and it's going to be in the login. That's what everybody's going to have to do, the login. So the login will be an AJAX call to the server to authenticate the user. So you don't have to turn in the 10th page as the login. Okay, then if you go into the book, that's up to chapter 15 now. Okay, if you go in the book, you will see that chapters 16 is flash. In fact, chapters 16 and 17 are flash. Does anybody know what flash is? Yes. Yes. It's Adobe Flash vector base. And just if you are just curious about it. You can actually Google it and it will tell you. Adobe Flash, which is formerly known as Macromedia Flash. By the way, there was a company called Micromedia that created this technology called Flash. Flash is a client-side technology. What does that mean? It will be downloaded to your browser and it will execute on your computer. Very similar to JavaScript. Hello? Is everybody awake? JavaScript is a client side technology. Why? Because when you request a page from the server, you will request an HTML, pictures, styles, oh, oh yes, and a JS file. The JS file is the JavaScript. It's the stuff that will get downloaded into your machine and run locally. That's why it's called a client side. Okay? Flash was or is a proprietary technology of Micromedia. Back then it was Micromedia. Then Adobe uh, bought Micromedia and they made it a product of their own and it's called today Adobe Flash. Okay? Has anybody seen Flash on a website? What does it look like? Like e like a movie type. In fact, you can create games that you have. You can see the page and it just downloads an object, and it's called Flash object, and it's totally independent of the page where it's being downloaded, and it executes on its own. It's its own standalone. Okay, so you download all the object, and finally, after it has downloaded all the binaries and every all the data, it will execute. Why are people trying to stay away from Flash today? Can anybody tell me? <coughs> it's very heavy. It's very heavy. Typically, websites that have Flash will take longer ta download times. Okay? So, if it's, and especially if you overdo it, if you put a lot of flash in your pages, 
your website will become very slow. Okay. Now, Flash is frequently used for advertisement, games, Flash animation. For but most recently, it has been positioned as a tool for rich internet applications. You guys should know this term already. It's also called today Web 2.0. When you have a website that behaves the same way as a standalone application. Give me an example of a standalone application for me now. Anybody can give me an example of a standalone application? The one that you grab a CD or a DVD and install on your machine. Anybody? Windows is an operating system, but it's more than that. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for an application, a program that runs locally on your computer. And guess what? It will run whether you're connected or disconnected. Yes, very good example, Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is an example of a standalone application that when you install it, it will run locally on your computer and it does not need the Internet. What's another attribute of standalone application? It's fast. Why? Because it runs locally. Although with Microsoft Office lately, I don't know if that's called fast or not, but um, it's supposed to be fast. It's very responsive. You can do really neat stuff like click, drag, drop, and do a whole bunch of stuff. And it's, it, your productivity improves with standalone applications because they're very user friendly and they're fast. Well, that's the whole idea about a rich internet application. A rich internet application is a website application, which means you cannot be disconnected. You have to be hooked to the web. It's a web application that behaves like a standalone application. It has the same user friendliness as a standalone application. And you can see all the attributes if you click on rich internet applications. Basically, it tells you, you know, it's a web application that has many of the characteristics of a desktop application software, typically delivered either by the way of a specific browser or a plugin or whatever. Okay? And these are the examples of rich internet applications. Adobe Flash is one of them. JavaScript is one of them. JavaFX. Does anybody know what JavaFX is? This is the Sun Microsystems equivalent to Ajax. Does anybody know what Serverlite is? Serverlite is the Microsoft equivalent of JavaScript. These are all client-side technologies. They will get downloaded to your browser. Okay? Now, what's the problem with these types of technology, proprietary technologies? Has anybody installed a machine from scratch and tried to run a flash? What does it tell you? Eh. You have to download the Flash Player. And it will be the same thing for Serverlite. And the same thing for Java X. And the same thing for all the others. Except JavaScript. Because JavaScript is embedded in the browser. Remember we talked about that? Okay. What's what? ActiveX is the Microsoft version of, it's the old version of the, what it's, what it's called in Java, the equivalent to applets. It's a binary that gets downloaded and run in your, in your machine locally. Okay, it could have, like applets, it could have very, uh, uh dangerous security flaws because you're giving a lot of rights execution rights on your machine to those components
that says an ActiveX controller is trying to download, you're actually allowing it. That's why they do it that way, and they don't automatically download it. Because you're the one who has to say, hmm, I should, should I allow this or not? Most people allow it because it comes from a reputable, hopefully, <laughs> reputable website, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you are exposing your your machine to whoever. Okay? So, Adobe Flash is the Adobe's client-side technology. And that's what we cover, what's what's covered in the book in chapter 16, 17. We're not going to cover that. You guys can read it all about it. Actually, they have really good samples on how to create a Flash um, uh, video on our website. <coughs> the other problem with proprietary technologies like this one is, what do you think you need to develop a Flash um, object? Yeah, that's the name of the language. You need an Adobe, an Adobe development environment. Yeah, CS3, CS4, all those. And how much are they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they could they could be thousands of dollars for licensing. So, if you want to be able to now, I think this book comes bundled with a 30-day license of that so you can actually develop the samples. Okay? If it comes with a CD. Some some books do not come with a CD. <coughs> but you know, that's the problem with proprietary. It needs its own player and you need licenses to be able to download or install the the environment that allows you to develop in that technology. And that's the same, that's the case for uh, Serverlight. Serverlight, you need Visual Studios. And um, uh, what's the other one? Um, I mean, all the other proprietary ones. Flex. Have anybody heard about Flex? No? Nobody heard about Flex? Flex was popular back in 2007. I'm not sure that it's popular anymore. It's also from Adobe. Flex fuel, not flex fuel, <laughs> obviously. Um, flex technology. So it's called Adobe Flex, okay? And it's a software development kit released by Adobe System for the development and deployment of class platform rich internet applications. And it's based on the Adobe Flash platform. So it's like the improved version of Flash. Okay. Flex applications can be written using Adobe Flash Builder, which has a nominal license fee of $2,000 per developer. Now, or by using the freely available Flex compiler from Adobe, which is a pain in the butt. I have tried doing applications in that compiler. It's awful. So, needless to say, we're not going to cover in Flex. Serverlight. Chapter 19 is Serverlight. Same kind of deal. You will have, to, which we, we do have, I think, in most labs, uh, Visual Studio. Visual Studio is the, um, the development environment that you will need to be able to develop Serverlight applications. Okay? So, we're not going to be covering that either. Dreamweaver. Has anybody heard about Dreamweaver? Yes? No? Dreamweaver used to be very popular in the 90s. Dreamweaver, in fact, was one of the first development environments that would actually allow you to create really neat websites. Except that it used a technology called, and I know you guys have r heard of it, Cold Fusion. Never heard of Cold Fusion? Cold Fusion, again, it's a proprietary 
Dreamweaver CS4. Here it is. Adobe Dreamweaver, formerly known Micromedia Dreamweaver, is one of those Micromedia tools again. It's a proprietary web development application originally created by Micromedia. Okay? And now it's developed by Adobe Systems. Here it is. Including Actisory Pages, Cold Fusion, and PHP. So you can actually do server side scripting, including ASP, Cold Fusion, and PHP. Now on the front end you can do CSS and JavaScript. Okay? So Adobe Dream is the expensive version of Eclipse. Pretty much. The Eclipse web developer version. Okay? Which is the one that you guys should have downloaded the second week and install and run to develop your website. Okay? So we're not going to be covering that, obviously, because we're using Eclipse. Then Chapter 21 talks about the web servers, which I have talked to you about. And in fact, I have not been fair. I only talked to you about one server. What was that? Apache web server. So I don't know if I did this for you guys, but if you do a Google on the most most used web servers did I do that? did I show you guys stats about that? let's see what the Wikipedia free encyclopedia says about it I don't know if I show you this. This is the most recent one, actually, because this covers 2011. Remember that I one that I showed you? I think it was up to 2009. Okay. What I said was, back in 1997, when we were developing websites, there weren't that many websites. They were into the thousands. Today, we're into the billions. Billions of websites out there. Okay, and each website is serviced by a web server. So they did a marketing analysis, and percentage-wise, they said this is what it looks like right now today in the all the web servers that are feeding those billions or servicing those billions of of websites. As you can see, Apache is the leader, but the second one is Microsoft. Okay. Microsoft has a web server. It's called IIS, Internet Information Server. Okay? I have Windows from Microsoft. And if I go into my computer and manage my computer, under services and applications, I do not have IIS installed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this is professional. Yeah. That's the other thing. Home edition, you will not be able to install IIS. But if you have the professional edition of Windows, you will be able to install IIS. So to install it, you will have to go to the control panel. You will have to add programs. And instead of adding or removing a program, we're actually you're doing to be adding a Windows component. Okay? So you will go into the Windows components and it will give you a list of components that are installed and are not installed. Here they are. This is one of the things I hate about Windows. You cannot resize the never mind. So this is the one, Internet Information Service. This is the web server from Microsoft. So you go into the details, and these are all the services that you will install when you install the Internet Information Service. You will install the File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, if you want to be able to do FTP between this laptop and any other computer. You can do SMTP, which is the small uh, box, you know, it's mail small mail what is it small mail transfer protocol 
basically do mail and also the World Wide Web servers this is the server this is the one that it loads on the back end and listens for any request on port 80 which is what Apache does remember so this will be the one that you will install now you need the Internet Information Services snap-in to be able to manage it let's say I'm going to install the file transfer protocol and the small and then I click OK and then go next and oh it's going to ask me for a Windows CD please don't ask me for a Windows CD yes it's going to ask me for a Windows CD which I don't have right now so forget it I'm not going to install it okay and then once you install it, you usually run it and stop it in a very similar way as the Apache. It will be a service that will resist through port 80. And, and there's also a root directory where all the websites will reside. And typically that root directory will be C, your hard drive, inetpub, inetpub, www.root. That will be the folder where all the websites will coexist, similar to the HTD Docs folder in the Apache. Okay? So the book on Chapter 21 will go through each one of those two. It will go through the installation and, um, and load of both the Apache server and the IIS server, okay? Which are the most two common. Uh, web servers out there in the world. Then, finally, Chapter 22 talks about databases. And if you guys run into problems creating your database, please read Chapter 22. Because Chapter 22 will go through each one of the steps that I went through in defining what is going to be my database table, what is going to be the fields in my database table, and what are the relationships, and how do I populate the data, and blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay?